So I have here a lightly used Powell Flight Deck. Now, I did actually film an intro with a nice brand new Powell Flight Deck and managed to delete it. So, here we have a lightly used one. Okay, so this was an 8.25. Now let's start with the measurements. So, across the front truck, we have just a hair under eight and three eighths, so 8.38. Across the back truck, we have just a hair under eight and three eighths again, and in the middle. So it's pretty consistent from the trucks down to the middle. Let's check the length. It is 31 and 13 sixteenths. So that is just above 31 and three quarters, nice length. Check the wheelbase. 14 and a quarter even. Let's check the nose and tail length. Seven inch nose, just under six and three quarter tail. So these are some pretty standard and popular measurements here. Next, I wanna check the weight of this board. Okay, so the flight deck is 1285. And just for reference, I have a similar size toy machine deck that's just under eight and three eighths as well. 1286. So that's incredibly similar. I mean, a gram, we're talking nothing. And I think most skateboarders know how much a gram weighs. So let's get into the construction a little bit. So I believe this is five plies and it has one carbon fiber layer underneath the bottom ply or in between the bottom ply and the rest of the plies. And then it has a carbon fiber layer on the top. And what you can't see now is there's also a reinforced layer around the trucks. So that's probably to stop you from breaking your board like this or getting pressure cracks. So what we got is five maple plies and two carbon fiber plies. And if you think about how this is strengthening it, so what you've got is you've got the wood that has some tensile strength and tensile strength is the resistance against snapping. So this reminds me a little bit of reinforced concrete. So when we say build a concrete slab, so imagine you've got like an eight inch concrete slab. So what you've got is the concrete itself has incredibly poor tensile strength. So if you have a long band of concrete with no steel in it, it's just gonna crumble under its own weight. And then you've got the steel in it that has incredible tensile strength. And the concrete, however, has incredible compressive strength. So if you have an eight inch concrete slab on the ground and somebody puts a lot of weight on it, it can hold an incredible amount of weight. So how this works is we put the steel in the bottom of the slab because when you put the steel, say you've got eight inches and the steel's in the bottom, what that does, the steel stops it from being able to flex so the top layer of concrete is all of a sudden compressing against itself and the steel is stopping it from being able to flex. So you get the best of both worlds. You get the tensile strength of the steel and the compressive strength of the concrete. Now why I bring that up is this has a similar effect. So when you jump down, say in the middle of this, this is why we've seen people drive over these with cars. When you jump down on the middle of this, normally the wood would crack, but this carbon fiber layer that's just next to the bottom has this incredible tensile strength that's able to withstand something like a car driving over it. So the wood does not crack because it's able to sort of help it, help the wood get that compressive strength as it's being flexed. Now, same thing, you've got this carbon fiber layer on the top, so you're not gonna be able to snap these noses and tails either because it's got so much strength from the tensile strength of the carbon fiber layers. So this is me making up things from my construction brain as to why these are so strong. But anyways, let's get on to the skating and the review that I filmed a couple of weeks ago.
Okay, so that skating was the first week where I was starting to get used to this board. And it was a big shock coming onto this board after being on the low pro, which is like such a steep board. And this one is, I would say, a lot mellower. In fact, what I'm learning is that medium to mellow concave boards actually feel a bit soggy when they're brand new. And this kind of has that feel. And when I had stood on other people's flight decks, I was apprehensive about trying one because I thought that they were a soggy deck. But what I've learned is that medium concaves don't feel as stiff. Some people are actually really gonna prefer that. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong impression and think that this deck is soggy. It's actually been a pretty crisp, nice feeling board. It's just not stiff. So when a board is a medium concave, it sort of has like a band of strength around in here and you can feel the outside edges of it flex a little bit. And this has that. So getting on to how this feels now three weeks in is the feel of it has not changed at all so typically a medium concave board goes from feeling a little bit softer a little bit springy to quite soggy after three weeks to a month and this board has remained exactly the same the whole way through and what's great about this is it's actually given me a chance to get used to a flatter deck and i would also like to say i think if powell came out with some steeper flight decks some steeper kicks and deeper concave that i think they would be amazing because i couldn't break this board and if i could get one that had a feel that's more my taste i think they'd be really great Although I'm not a board breaker, so I actually don't need to spend the extra money on these. Let's quickly take a look at the shape and then get to some more skating. So one thing that threw me when I first got on this deck is that the nose is slightly more tapered than the tail. Here's the tail. It's quite round and would make a nice nose. Here's the nose and it has just slightly more taper. So it's actually almost identical, but the fact that it had just slightly more taper on the nose kind of threw me off for a while because I'm used to it being the other way around. And it actually bugged me, but now I'm used to it and of course it doesn't matter. And somebody has been out here skating at the Richmond Oval because this ledge has about two segments that are perfectly greased up. So we got about 14 feet of ledge that's broken in so nicely now. I hit the part that wasn't broken in. All right, I'm low on battery. You're gonna have to take those ones. So I've really been enjoying this deck on lower ledges because of the sort of mellowish nose and tail. And I've chosen to keep the thunders on it because I know that if I put indies on this, I would find this deck for me personally to be unrideable. I just really like things steeper, especially with indies. I find it's very well balanced on thunders and works quite nicely for a lot of my flat ground tricks too. But I do have a tendency to rocket flip a bit from time to time because I have to like flick really hard to get my kick flips to level out nicely. But the rest of my stuff seems to work out pretty decently. It also for some reason seems to chip a little bit easier. So I've got just like chunks coming out of my board. There's another one right there. Still though, for a deck with one, two, three, four, five maple plies. Is that correct? One, two, three, four, five. So this is only five maple plies as opposed to the traditional seven with the two carbon fiber layers. It's still quite crispy. I think I'm going to be setting up a new deck soon. Even though this has tons of life, 
There's been so many reviews of these things. I mean, we've seen people driving over them with cars. We've seen people re-gripping them after about a month and I can see why. Like, so they're a very long lasting deck. The only thing to note is because they're so skinny, like as in thin, um, you're going to get razor tail faster because there's two less plies kind of to go through. Like you can feel it's noticeably thin when you hold these boards. So you might even end up like kind of sanding it down if you want to get rid of the razor tail and make it feel a little crisper for a bit, re-grip the deck. I mean, you're going to get a lot of life out of these if you want. So I'll admit I haven't tried all the other shapes. This is the one with the blunter nose and tail. They have ones with pointier nose and tails. I don't know if those are steeper or if they're still mellow with just a triangular nose and tail. Can you guys let me know in the comments? So in summary, I think these are a great deck. Like I think they really hit the nail on the head for the market of people who break decks a lot or who want a long lasting deck. While it does cost almost 50% more than a regular deck, if you break boards a lot, this is gonna be a good investment. The only downside being, of course, if the shapes aren't to your personal taste, it'll be something you'd have to get used to. So overall, I'd say the Powell Flight Deck is actually a really good product. I'd happily ride another one when you guys put out some more shapes. So anyways, thanks for watching. Again, I'm in the flight path if you can hear all these planes. I hope you found this review useful if you're thinking about buying one or just wanted to know what the heck these are like. So again, see you guys. Go click on something else now. I don't know. Go learn how to do some construction or something. Go watch my other channel.